Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're in the Old Roy display room at this time. Uh, it's a little cool this morning, but alligators are still very uh, alert. They may not be active, but they're still very alert and very responsive to any kind of stimuli. They, uh, this gator here, his name is Old Roy because he came after the park was built. He sort of moseyed in here after the park was built and he and old Oscar seemed to get along. I don't remember anybody ever saying there was any conflict between the two, which is unusual. Uh, but Roy died back in 74. No, 72. He died in 72 and we sent him off to a taxidermist in Atlanta, uh, his, whose name was Joe Hurt. Uh, and he did an excellent job of, of restoring him. And notice, the, obviously, these, these things on top are called scoots. And they have sometimes 200 or 300 of these on their back. Uh, they are dermal bones. They are not, they are not attached to the, to the axial skeleton. They are actually just in the skin. They arise in the skin and completely develop there. Uh, they, uh, if we notice the, the mouth, how the, how the teeth are arranged, notice that there is a curvature here and here and there's a, con a, a matching curvature on the, on the upper jaw here and here. So these, these two curves, and, and along with all these, all 70 of his teeth, uh, exert tremendous holding power. When they close their jaws, they have somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 pounds of pressure. Consequently, what we see here is the gum line. That's the gum line. We don't see the tooth down in the gum. But when he closes his mouth, those, those teeth interlock like so, and there's no way an animal can pull loose from them. That's an extremely strong hold. Uh, some of these teeth have been abused by visitors in the park here. Uh, this one and this one. Uh, I, I was here one day and I fell, came in with a pair of pliers and he wanted to take a sample, a souvenir home. I said, no, 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 <laughs> we don't do that. This, this is a very expensive uh, taxidermy job and we're not going to abuse him. When gators are in the water and they're at the surface, their respiratory system and their circulatory system adjust to that function of breathing above the water. However, when he closes his mouth and his nose and he goes underwater, circulatory changes occur that close off pulmonary circulation. No lung activity occurs underwater, obviously. So, all of his blood then goes to, to general circulation, to systemic circulation, rather than to pulmonary, because it would be just a waste of circulation. Uh, and as he, as he swallows any kind of food, it goes here to about this point. This is where his stomach is. His stomach is right under here, maybe, uh, uh, he's in, inside the rib cage, but in doing so, those rocks act as grinding stones and helps in his, because he does, he has no molars. See, there's no molars up here. These are all holding teeth. So, uh, so the stomach actually is a grinding organ that grinds up the fur, feathers, scales, bones, teeth, eyeballs, whatever he eats. Whatever he eats is ground up in the stomach, 
passes into the intestine where where the small intestine where the for the nutrients are are taken out and sit into circulation then it passes into the large colon and by the time it gets here it begins to change color it begins to be sort of gray or yellow and by the time it goes by the time he excretes waste material his feces is sometimes white or gray um, and it's uh, and it, and it comes out in large large chunks uh, I saw a gator crawl up, crawl up on the bank one day and she was sunning and about two hours later she crawled off and she left a pile of goodies over there on the bank and I said I got to have some of that. <laughs> so I got me three or four pieces, took them home, dried them out, deodorized them, and, and preserved them. And now I use them in my dis in displays in my lecture program about gators. Um, the, the tail, the tail of an alligator is exactly half of the body length. So if you measure from here to the tip of his nose and from here to the tip of the tail, it's almost identical, almost. There may be an inch or two difference. Uh, the tail is also an important part of his storage system. That's where he stores fat for, for energy during the winter time when he's hibernating like right now out there. Uh, when they go underwater, when they go underwater into their cave, even then they rest with their nose just above the water line because they don't truly hibernate and, and stop breathing just because they're in that cave and because they're not moving around very much because they still breathe throughout the winter time. Uh, and fully aware of what's going on around them.